Hello, welcome to Molly's Garage. Today I'm going to be talking you through diagnosing a car that is overheating. This is going to be a long video. It's going to have a lot of information in it. And below I'll make sure to also have the time points for the different topics that I'll be covering. Stay tuned. I have a fundamentals of a coolant system video as well, which I'll make sure to link below. I really recommend you watch that one first to get an understanding of how these systems operate and how they're designed to operate, because that will really help your understanding during the diagnosis process and why I'm doing the steps that I'm doing. There seems to be some confusion surrounding how this gauge is supposed to indicate and where this needle is supposed to sit during normal conditions. So as you can see right now, this needle is basically right in the middle of the LED. This is completely normal. When the needle reaches approximately just the right side of this LED, then under normal conditions, we would expect the radiator fan to come on. The radiator fan has come on and it's now gonna run until this needle is approximately just on the left side of this LED now. The radiator fan just turned off and as you can see, this needle is now just on the left side of the LED. So under normal operating conditions, this needle should always kind of be swinging from one side to the LED to the other, getting turned on and coming back. That is normal. It's completely normal to be in that range. If it gets anywhere past the LED, as you can see right here in this video, well, then we have a problem and the car is getting hot. Let's get started by talking about what you're gonna be doing if you're driving down the street and you notice that your car is starting to get hot. If you're driving and you notice that your vehicle's starting to overheat, kind of like mine here, so it's getting past the LED, the first thing that you should do Without hesitation, pull over to the side of the road, turn off your car. Let this thing cool down and then we can figure out what's going on with it. Then you can open the hood and make sure that your coolant is between your min and your max. As you can see, mine is right about here. Then underneath the vehicle right here, the next thing that I would do is I would make sure that we have our water pump belt still on the water pump. So this is our water pump right here. And you can see the belt is here and it's also pretty tight. So that indicates that most likely the water pump isn't the issue. And you can also look, make sure there's no coolant leaking, anything like that. In this car, I actually removed the expansion tank for the coolant and I installed this radiator that's a top fill. But the thing is you never wanna open this when it's hot because it will boil over and it'll burn you. Once you've looked outside the car, you've let the car cool down, you don't see any coolant leaks, you do have the right amount of coolant and the water pump belt is still connected and then you need to limp it home, you can. So what you need to do is turn the heat on to high and then if you have a car that had AC installed on it originally, turn the blower on and then put this on a setting where the AC would turn on. So I just like to go with the max AC setting. Then since I actually have an AC switch installed, I'm gonna turn this switch on as well. So you're probably asking yourself why you should also turn on the AC if your car is overheating. Well, the answer is simple. The way these cars and cooling systems are designed is that when you have the AC compressor engaged, again, it doesn't matter if your AC isn't actually functioning, but when you put that on a position where the AC is supposed to work, it will turn that radiator fan on. So it's a really nice way to trick the radiator fan to come on in case that thermo switch failed. Now that the vehicle's home, we can start the diagnosis process. So again, I'm gonna double check to make sure that my coolant is at the right level which it is. The water pump belt is nice and tight and there's nothing leaking down here. All of my hoses look good. Now the first thing that I'm gonna wanna check is to see if my thermostat opens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the car, let it warm up and I'm gonna continually monitor the temperature of this upper hose and then of the lower radiator hose as well, which is right down there. Underneath the vehicle, here's a better view of this lower radiator hose. So now what's happening is that the water pump is running and it's circulating coolant through the engine, but the thermostat is closed, which is right down there, and there's now no warm water going into the radiator. So I'm gonna watch until the needle reaches about the left side of that LED, then we're gonna check the hose and see if the bottom one is warm. This top one's always gonna be a little bit warm because this is where the warm coolant from the engine is getting pushed into here, but the bottom one is always gonna be cold until the thermostat opens. The needle's on the left side of the LED. Let's go check that hose temperature underneath to see if it's warm yet. All right, still cool. Let's monitor it for a few more minutes. All right, this hose is starting to warm up pretty quickly. You will know when this hose gets hot. The thermostat doesn't open until 87 degrees. So when this thermostat opens, that means the water flowing through here is gonna be at least 87 degrees Celsius, which is really darn hot. I mean, that will burn your hand. Oh yeah, this is super hot now. And here we are inside the vehicle, as we can see, this is perfect. So the thermostat is opening, the temperature is still continuing to rise, and now let's see if the coolant fan turns on. Step one, thermostat opening. Step two, coolant fan turning on. And as we talked about, the coolant fan turns on just when the needle is just to the right of the LED. So my system is functioning properly. 
Some of you guys are probably thinking, well, great, Ali, your system's working, but mine is not. What do I do? Good question. So if your thermostat did not open when that needle was starting to get to that middle of the LED, then you know that you need to replace your thermostat. The other way to know if you need to replace your thermostat is have you ever done a coolant flush on this system and replaced your thermostat? If you don't know the answer when that was done last, replace your thermostat, do a coolant flush. It's guaranteed to be needed on the vehicle. I have a whole video that outlines it and I'll make sure to link it as well. So if your thermostat is opening, but your fan is not coming on, then there is an issue with the coolant fan. And that is a very common issue to have issues with this coolant fan not coming on. Sometimes people think that they need to wire this fan to always stay running. You absolutely do not. You just have to check one sensor and one fuse and it'll probably fix your coolant fan issues. So the way these coolant fans turn on is with either one of these two switches. This is 87 and older, this is 88 and newer. So the way this works is that the coolant fan is always getting power going to it. And what this switch does is when this closes, this effectively grounds the system, allowing the current to flow. And this is not dependent on what position your ignition key is on. This radiator fan can turn on when your key is off. The location of this thermo switch is right down here underneath the battery by the radiator. And you can see mine right down there. It's that brownish gray switch with these two wires coming off it. And if you have an 88 or newer vehicle, it's gonna be located right on the bottom in the same spot, but it's gonna have this plug with three wires coming off of it. I'll first be starting with diagnosing an 87 and older vehicle and then a 1988 and newer vehicle. The way we will diagnose this switch is really easy. Just reach down, unplug these two wires or that connector with these two wires unplugged, simply take a little jumper wire that you can make just by cutting off the ends, and then connect these two wires right here. The key does not need to be in the on position for this. All right, my fan comes on. So if the fan is not coming on on its own and it's starting to overheat, then now we have diagnosed that this thermo switch that is right down there is faulty. If you jumpered these two wires and the fan isn't coming on, then we need to make sure that we're getting voltage to the fan. So what you need to do there, there's a red and black wire, and then there's a red wire. Take the red wire, take a multimeter, connect the positive end of the multimeter to the red wire, then take the negative end and connect it to any ground. So you can connect it to here, or what I like to do, I always like to take it back to the battery. As you can see, we're at 12.6 volts, so that means we are getting power to the fan. If you're not getting 12.6 volts, or you know around 12, then we need to go inside and check a fuse. What we need to check is to make sure that fuse number one, this 30 amp fuse, is not burned out. And the rule of thumb is never to look at them just by eye. Always check them with a the multimeter to see if there's any resistance. Or just replace it. But mine is still in working condition, so I'm not going to replace it. On these 1988 newer vehicles, same process. I unplug this connector here. It's a little difficult to get to down there. As you can see, it kind of sucks. But it's no big deal. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump for this red wire to this red and white one and to the red and black one. You're going to turn the fan on, so again, just be careful so that you don't get your fingers caught in there. All right, the low speed is working. Now let's test that high speed side. That is working as well. If for some reason it's not working, do the same procedure. Take a multimeter, connect it to the red wire, and then ground it, see if you get about 12 volts. If you don't get 12 volts, then we need to go inside and check fuse number one. Fuse number one right here, the 30 amp. If your fan is still not turning on after you jumper these and you know you're getting power to it, well, then there's one other possibility. On these 1988 newer vehicles, you had what's called an after run system. And the way this works, there's just a separate sensor back on the engine and that'll turn the fan on after you shut your vehicle down if it's sensing anything greater than 70 degrees Celsius and that is controlled by this relay right here. So if for some reason your system isn't working, then you can replace this relay, and if that fixes it, then you are good to go. It seems that the thermo switch usually is the most common part that fails on these vehicles, causing the coolant fan not to come on and therefore the car to overheat. So I've got this car up on ramps, and this one actually needs its thermo switch replaced. Underneath the vehicle here, the thermo switch is located just right up in here, basically right behind this tube. So to get that out, we're gonna first remove these two screws. Now you can see the switch is just that one, that gray one right there. So the new thermo switch comes with this little gasket right here. And what we're gonna do is remove this one and then really quickly try to screw the new one in. Now just be careful when you screw it in, some coolant's gonna run out and also make sure that you don't cross thread it. Cause if you cross thread it, you're screwed. Then you have to replace your radiator. So definitely don't wanna do that. I'm gonna remove this horn real quick to make it easier to see. 
I think this is a 29 millimeter. Deep ball is what you'd need to get that out, and I just definitely don't have one of those. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make do with an adjustable wrench. We'll see uh, how this works. Oh, look at that. She's already loose. Let's get our new sensor handy here. Make this a quick swap. All right, one sensor ready. It's in the hole, make sure we get it nice and straight so we don't cross thread anything. There we go. If it doesn't go in easy by hand, you're cross threading it. And then, Tighten it on up, nothing too tight, it goes into a plastic radiator. All right, I'm gonna wipe this all down, make sure it doesn't leak. And then I'll plug in my connector. As you can see right here, this little plastic divot goes into that right there. Let's plug that on in. Get it seated all the way. Now we get to start the car and see if the radiator fan comes on. The needle's on the right side of the LED. The fan should be coming on any second now. The fan's not running until this needle gets pulled right back to the middle of the LED. This system is now functioning just as it should. That wraps up today's episode of Ollie's Garage. I hope that you learned something and that your cars are running at the proper temperatures.